Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to the Newbrick Workshop and this Workshop Notes video number 25. Now this is a very short Workshop Notes video, it's really just to let you know that I'm still here. I know it's been a little while, I've been really really busy building a new dining room table. I'll say a little bit more about that later. Now my wife has just bought this uh, long rule, it's uh, uh, 1.2 meters long and it's for her uh, curtain making and, and things like that and it's a really lovely product. It's made by a company called Silverline and it came from Top Tools uh, Direct and they're in Merseyside and um, it, the on, only issue with it is right on the very edge here it's just very slightly sharp it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, one could use just a little piece of sandpaper or I'm just taking a, a very fine file and just going over those edges just to take that tiny bit of sharpness away. Because if you're handling a fine fabric, perhaps even uh, something like silk, then you don't want to have anything that something could catch on. And that tiny bit there just needs that. And if you didn't have a file like this, then you could use a little piece of sandpaper and that would fix that in no time at all. And this is the actual product. I think it's uh, part number is shown on there. Well, I've now put a couple of dog holes in the front of my bench, uh, which line up uh, with the bed of the vise. I used a spirit level across here uh, and then judged 10 millimeters below that to get the centers of a pair of holes that now allow me to have something resting across here like this lump of oak that I'm about to plane. And these holes have been uh, chamfered with the UJK chamfer tool and I can now use any of the UJK uh, bench dogs to go in there. And these are just the ordinary ones that push in. Now because these holes don't have fresh air behind them, uh, they're going to be slightly tricky uh, to get out. So I'm using my little removal tool uh, to get them out when need be. But actually that's a good thing because it keeps them in place uh, when they're in use. So now I can put this piece down. It's now resting in three places. Tighten it up and now I can start planing. Now whilst we're at the bench here, let me just mention uh, this product. This is Bonda Wood Fill. Uh, and this particular tin is what they call Super Soft Dark. And I've got another tin here, uh, which is Ebony. And uh, I've used this product uh, recently on this new dining room table. Uh, the table's made of oak, uh, and there are some defects in the oak. And I don't want to cut those defects out. Uh, that would be silly. I want to make a feature of them. And so in the bigger cracks, I've used some of this filler. And I've mixed uh, the two parts together uh, to produce a pretty dark uh, fill and it looks quite nice on uh, the oak. And the beauty of this product is it's uh, an epoxy product, uh, it's flexible, so in the changes of temperature, changes of humidity, uh, as the wood itself might move, so this will expand and contract a little bit uh, with the wood. And so it's a very, very useful uh, woodworking uh, product. And there they both are. And it's probably difficult to see, but I've used a tiny bit on this uh, slight crack in this piece of walnut here uh, for this little box that I've made. Little box with a little tray that comes out like so. Well, I, I thought I'd better show you this. Um, I've got to do some work away from base over the coming weeks. And I'm taking my old fashioned hand saw, I haven't used it for a while. And I want to make sure that when it's traveling in the car that the sharp edges don't uh, cause any damage. So I've made this little holster for it. It's very simple, saw slips in like so. I'll put a little tag or something on here to keep the, the cover in place. But you can see it's all nicely protected. Now these two long strips are actually an off cut of some tongue and groove, some uh, half inch tongue and groove which I had uh, and you can see there's the groove there, it was uh, just ripped off the side, I had a long piece and uh, so I've cut that uh, to length and then I've got some thin bits of 
wood on either side which are just glued on to hold it in the right shape. These thin bits were when I was doing the demonstration of the Axminster bandsaw and I was doing those very fine sort of veneer cuts. Now sometimes when I go to uh, one of the children's houses or friend's house uh, just to do a quick repair to a bit of Osmo because of some damage in a small area or whatever, uh, I just want to take a tiny bit and uh, so there we are. I've got a little tiny bit in there. But rather than then going through the fuss of having to pour it out from the can and then wiping up all the drips and so on, save these cowpole syringes that you get for you know, dispensing children's medicine. You know, the, the idea is you fill it up with the medicine uh, and then squirt it into the child's mouth, poor thing. Uh, anyway, save those and they are perfect for taking a small amount out of a tin without messing up the tin itself and squirting it into another container. So a little cowpole syringe. But please be very careful if you do this, do not allow that syringe to come anywhere near anybody who might use it on a child or any child who might decide to put it in its mouth. Uh, either put it safely, well away in the workshop, or throw it away. And finally, in my series, 101 uses for Bessie clamps that you never thought of, uh, here's my final thing. I'm repairing a puncture in my uh, wheelbarrow uh, wheel, and uh, it's very difficult getting the actual tyre back onto uh, the wheel uh, in the centre here. I've repaired the puncture, which was simple enough, but I've got uh, the tyre around so far, and I'm just using these two clamps just to hold that in place, and now I'm going to go around encouraging it with a pair of these and that's it and that's on so that seems to have worked Well, that's that uh, tyre now repaired. Uh, I'm sorry that this workshop notes video has been a bit of a pickle, uh, but I'm really tied up with a big project, and that is making my new dining room table. It's made of solid oak, it's really lovely, and I've nearly finished, and I've been uh, tracking it with the video all the way through. So that's what I'm working on, but it's gonna take me a little while yet uh, before I can show it to you. Many thanks for watching. Take care, bye-bye.